My grandma told me I have a gift. I can see things others can't. Also, I can move anywhere in time, the future and the past. My past has many secrets. I've learned that I can't change the past, but I can take something from it. The boy hears the dead woman moving around downstairs. The woman's eyes glow red as she moves through the house looking for him. Uh, uh. Footsteps can be heard moving up the stairs. The house shakes with each step. The boy can hear the dead woman's moaning getting louder and louder. He pulls the covers over his head, hoping she won't find him. The boy holds the flashlight against his chest. The loud footsteps slowly move down the hallway. The footsteps get closer, closer, and closer. <laughs> that didn't scare me! Yeah, it did. You two go to bed. You guys have school tomorrow. No, go to sleep, Emma. Hey, didn't finish the story. Mom's gonna get mad. Go to bed, Emma. Emma? Did you hear me? The door slowly opened. The last time I saw my brother was the night he disappeared. Quinn's face was on every news channel in Shasta. He was the missing boy who vanished in thin air. I don't remember much about that night. There was no signs of a break-in, and all the doors and windows were locked. When the news started to lose interest about my brother's disappearance, and began following other stories of missing people, I would spend most of my time in my room, away from my mom. That's when my mom and I drifted apart. Her spirit was broken just like mine. We lost a huge part of us the night he went missing. I miss my brother. I miss hearing his laugh. We did everything together. I always had his back and he always had mine. He's always on my mind. I dream about him often. I enjoy falling asleep so I can escape reality.
Sometimes I would have bad dreams. I would hear my brother's voice calling to me. Where are you? I can't find you. I'm scared. Help me. He always sounded scared and alone. I'm always alone in those dreams. And then I would wake up. I had to move in with my grandma after my mom fell into depression. My grandma was special to me. She helped me open up about everything that was bothering me. My grandma has been alone since my grandpa disappeared around Mount Shasta. That's really good. You're a good cook. He went missing around the same time my brother disappeared. We lost two loved ones that year. My grandma would spend most of her nights watching my grandpa's research vlogs. My grandma believed something inside Mount Shasta took grandpa and my brother. She believes the Lumerians took them. Good morning. I hope you can all hear me. I'm using a new camera and I hope it's working. Today's Sunday, February 27th. It's about six in the morning and a beautiful morning. You can see Mount Shasta behind me. Isn't she gorgeous? I just want to say hi to my loving wife, Barbara. She's usually by my side during these explorations, but she hasn't been feeling too well for the last few days. I love you, honey. About two hours from now, I'll be exploring the baseline of Mount Shasta, and I hope to find the lost city entrance of Telos. I need to be careful. The energy around here can change rather quickly if I cause a disturbance. I'll be using special equipment to locate any of the tunnels within the mountain. The luminarians were well known for using a complex, vast tunnel system to get around. I'll be video documenting my way to Mount Shasta and I hope to capture some interesting sightings in the sky. They can be very curious when they want to be. This is Jack Widmer signing out. Lumerians. My grandma told me Lumerians are a highly evolved spiritual race who live in an underground city 11 miles deep within Mount Shasta. Some people have claimed that the city is full of gold and shields and powerful crystals. The city is called Telos. The city houses 200,000 Lumerians. Today, many people flock to Mount Shasta. Some people have reported hearing low frequency sounds coming from the peak of the mountain while others have witnessed bright lights moving around the mountain. It's these type of mysteries that have made my grandparents search for the truth. While Grandpa was focused on the search for Lumerians, my grandma was more interested in other phenomenons. By the way, my grandma, like my grandpa, is different and always thinks outside the box. She believes in anything from Bigfoot to UFOs, crop circles, and time travel. You name it, my grandma has researched it. Video feedback loop. This involves a video camera connected to a TV monitor that creates a looping pattern interference. Paranormal investigators use this technique because they believe the video feedback helps energy from the other dimensions connect with the living. My grandma has been working on this concept ever since my grandpa's disappeared. Every night she tries to make contact with him. 
waiting for any sign to come through, an image or his voice. I know you can do it. Just say my name. Say my name. Jack, say my name. Please, say my name. Say my name. Jack, say my name. I know you can do it, Jack. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, say my name. <sighs> say my name. Just say my name. I know you can do it, Jack. Just say my name. When I was nine years old, my grandma used the video feedback on me to help me astral travel to the unknown. Let's begin. You're safe now. I want you to focus only on my voice. You are a traveler. You're now free from this world. Free from everything. You see a door. This door will open secrets only you can see. You are not afraid. You see yourself moving closer. Closer. And closer. When I count to three, the door will open. One, two, three. What do you see? That was the first time I met Cyan. After my first astral trip, the spirit became part of my life. My grandma believes this female present is the spirit guide or a guardian angel. May I play? Do you want to play? Cyan? I decided to call the spirit Cyan because it was my favorite color. Cyan was always playful and sneaky. Emma! Other times she was quiet and distant. I could never figure her out. <laughs> Over here. It's your time. Most of the time, Cyan would come to me in my dreams. When it was a clear and starry night out. I believe Cyan was trying to show me something.
When I turned 11, science started to become more present in my life. Our favorite game was hide and seek. My brother didn't believe in cyan. She never showed herself to the rest of my family. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. Ready or not, here I come. When I turned 12, my dreams started to become very vivid. I would have lucid dreams that allow me to actually travel more freely. I would find myself back at home with my brother before the lights would come. The luminance light would always find me. <laughs> I woke up from the lights with something in my hand. Astral travel. It's basically an out-of-body experience where the astral body separates from the physical body. When this happens, you can travel outside the physical body throughout the universe. Astral travel about three times a week. Cyan is always there to guide me.
I always choose to go somewhere around nature. Cyan tags along most of the time. Always find something new waiting for me in the woods. The woods hold many secrets. On my last astral travel, Cyan created a portal of light. She told me this was the only way I could enter the capital crystalline city, Telos, the city of light. <laughs> Distant beloved ones have attained a level of spiritual greatness and understanding, so they can easily emerge physically among us. Cyan has told me she's my star sister, and her goal is to reunite us with her world and teach us how to plan for the dark times ahead. Ancient Lumeria is as beautiful as Cyan described it over the years. What stood out the most is where the Lumerians kept their sacred records, teachings, and technologies. The room was filled with bright auras, surrounding a large Lumerian crystal. Lumerian crystals are healing stones and carry messages from the beings of Lumeria. They also store ancient records in the form of light energy. Cyan told me the light will not be contained anymore. And the long dark night that has separated us will soon be over.
A year after my brother disappeared, my mom took me camping to help escape from the memories at home. This was the last time I saw Cyan. Emma. Emma. Oh, there you are. I want to show you something. Come on, Emma. I'll be waiting for you. Look about the stars. This is all for you. Follow me. Don't be scared, Emma. Follow my voice, Emma. You're getting warmer. Keep walking, Emma. You're almost there. I'm waiting for you. calling me into the darkness, and I followed her voice through the night, until I was afraid to go any further. Something didn't feel right. I lost Cyan that night. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on down there. My grandma continues on where my grandfather left off, trying to find out about the Lumerians. Crazy, huh? She has been researching cases around Mount Shasta. Most of the evidence is photographs of light patterns near the peak of Mount Shasta. A hunter captured this video near the base of Shasta. This one was recorded in the cloud.
Recently, she got a phone video from a family gathering near Mount Shasta. The last spotted UFOs around Shasta was on Christmas Day. The lights were seen moving across the night sky in the downtown area. My grandma believes the energy around Shasta is growing stronger. She believes the energy can cause mental disturbance. She believes the Lumerians have taken my grandpa and my brother. She thinks they are somewhere deep inside Mount Shasta. My brother and grandfather weren't the only ones who disappeared. Three other people vanished near Mount Shasta. She believes a pattern of disappearances started in 1983. Five people disappeared around Weed, California. Eleven years later, in 1994, five people disappeared in Mount Shasta. In 2005, five more people disappeared in McLeod. Twenty sixteen, five more people disappeared, including my brother and my grandpa. Sage Martin, Alex Hayden, Logan Douglas. Jack Woodmer, and Quinn Rose. Every 11 years, five people would vanish without a trace around Mount Shasta. My grandma believed the Lumerians were abducting people every 11 years. A portal was created by the Lumerians to allow the Chosen Ones to enter. Grandma said my grandpa and my brother are somewhere inside the mountain, that somehow they must have entered the portal and the Lumerians were holding them there. First to go missing was a young boy named Sage Martin.
<laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> again. Sage. Second to go missing was a young man driving along Highway 88. A young boy named Logan Douglas went missing during a vacation trip with his family. Mom! Dad! Son's about to die, but you, you need to see this. Listen. My grandfather disappeared doing what he liked to do best, searching for the lost city of Telos. Talk about a great find. Wow, look at this beauty. You're looking at Lumerian crystal. There's this strange sound around here, a very strange sound. Oh wow, we have more company. There's two up there now. I wish you could be here with me, Barbara. I hope you can see this. And, and look over there, another one. The 
third one's moving. I can feel the light on me. It's so amazing. I, I can't tell which direction it's going. <laughs> Some people have had the experience of seeing the luminaries up close. In a 1994 interview, Manuel Rose was interviewed by a local television station about his experiences near Mount Shasta. What you are about to hear is an actual video recorded by Manuel Rose. Many other witnesses have described hearing strange sounds coming from Mount Shasta near the time of day commonly referred to as magic hour. The sound recorded by Mr. Rose resonates at a very low frequency and lasts only a couple of minutes. On day two, the Rose family witness a pattern of lights hovering above Mount Shasta. Upon seeing this, Manuel aims his 8mm camera and captures that moment. Just as quickly as those lights appear, they suddenly vanish, moving in opposite directions. The Rose family is a native family of Shasta, and they've been camping near Mount Shasta for the last 10 years. 1983, however, would be their last vacation together. The Rose's young son, James, went missing on the third day of that vacation. While hiking near the base of Mount Shasta, Manuel turned a corner and lost sight of his son for one brief second. It was the last time anyone saw young James again. Police and rangers scoured the forest looking for James. In a 1994 interview with Manuel, he describes a young woman he encountered in the woods while looking for James. Manuel described the woman's features to a local sketch artist who created an image of this mysterious woman. Some people believe that what Manuel describes is a luminous being. To this day, no one has come forward with any information about this mysterious woman. What do you believe? Oh God, where did you get this? I don't know. This is important. Come here. My grandma knew I had a powerful gift when she saw the watch. My grandpa wore that watch on the day he disappeared. I told my grandma everything about my dreams and all the things I was able to pull through during my astral travel trips. I was able to grab onto something from the past, a toy tire, a coin, but this was different. I told grandma everything, she told me I have a gift. Not a gift to astral travel, but astral travel back in time. I can't change the past, but I have the ability to bring something back. Hi, hey, 
I need to bring my granddaughter in to, uh, to get a reading. Grandma knew a psychic from the area who might be able to help me understand more about my gifts. So she took me to see her. I was nervous, but willing to try anything. Okay, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's begin. So I'd like for you to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths and just focus on the sound of my voice. Push your thoughts out of your mind. And as you feel them drift away, you find yourself floating in a sea of nothingness. And while you're in this space, I would like for you to allow your mind to focus on what it is that you most desire to know. What are you searching for, Emma? What are you yearning to uncover? Focus on that feeling and just allow it to grow stronger. Okay, you may open your eyes now. So traditionally, the star card represents inspiration, renewed hope, and a chance for rebirth after great struggle, change, and chaos. For you, I sense that there is a second meaning. There is a messenger a presenter of sorts and she is searching for you she brings you something wrapped in light that unfortunately reveals undesirable truths she is a beautiful spirit surrounded in darkness she walks through the shadows. She is wise and cosmic and has been making her way to you for many years now. She comes to you with outstretched arms. She beckons you forward towards your destiny. While she doesn't mean to cause you any harm, the truths that she reveals do bring great emotional turmoil. I want you to know that you have the ability to move through this. The pain and the hardship that will arise from this difficult encounter act as a beacon of light, illuminating the path that stretches out before you. Even though the truth may hurt, Whatever she reveals has great purpose. I want you to remember that you have everything that you need to navigate through this. You have all that it takes to triumph. Her friend pulled a card for me. 
the card revealed that I indeed had a spirit guide that was trying to help me, and it was up to me to understand what she was trying to show me. My grandma felt that, when I was astral traveling, that I was going through the portal that all the missing people disappeared through. Because I was able to bring back an object that was with my grandpa the day he disappeared. That maybe I would be able to retrieve items for my brother and the three other people who had gone missing and prove to the world that anything is possible. This was something she could show to the skeptics. I had to prepare myself for the ultimate trip. I had to prepare myself for what was behind the wall of time. My brother was waiting for me. The first person I was going to visit was Sage Martin. You're safe now. I want you to focus only on my voice. You are a traveler. You are now free from this world. Free from everything. (laughs) Do it again. Again. Now it was Logan Douglas's turn. Now I was off to visit Alex Hayden. Every trip, I was able to bring back something, and now I was ready to go even further. It was time to get my brother. You're safe now. I want you to focus only on my voice. You are a traveler. You are now free from this world. Free from everything. It's now June 4th, 2016. The time is 10.20 p.m. You're 10 years old. You are at that moment. Safe. You hear your brother's voice. What do you see? Where are you? (laughs) (laughs) I scare you. 
No. Go to sleep, Emma. Hey, I didn't finish the story. Mom's gonna get mad. Go to bed, Emma. Emma! You two go to bed. You guys have school tomorrow. Did you hear me? The door slowly opens. He's here. Who's here? Quinn. Quinn, where are you? Quinn, come out. Emma, he didn't come through. Yeah, he did. I saw him. He's not here. He is here. He's here. Oh my god, Quinn, Quinn! Oh my god! You're safe, you're safe, Quinn. Don't move. Wait, Emma, don't touch him. It's okay, Quinn. I knew I was able to bring my brother back, even though it was hard to believe. Oh god, put me on hold. I was seeing him with my own eyes. He was here. Grandma was shocked and cautious. She wouldn't let me go near him. She believed Quinn was surrounded with Lumerian energy. I just stood there. I had no emotions. There was something not right. Quinn was different. He looked older. Something or someone took the life out of his eyes. Something just wasn't right. On the last night I saw Cyan, she told me that the reason I could see her was because I was very special. She said they are preparing people like me to be ready to help them when the time came, to help our planet and the human race heal. She told me they are more like her, and they too are preparing others like me when the time comes. Months after my brother came home and was acting more like himself, he told me about his gifts. I can't help but wonder if he was being prepared for the time that Sion spoke of. And if so, we are waiting. We are ready. <laughs> 